Hi guys, Michelle here at Serendipity House. I have a really fun project for you guys today. We're gonna to be working on some trays with some DIY paint, Iron Orchid Designs transfers, and I'm gonna walk you right through the process of how to use an epoxy resin to coat your trays and get a really special finish. You can find kits that I put together to make these yourself on serendipity.house. Uh, and I would uh, really love it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel here and connect with me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Printrust and share with me your projects. All right, guys, here we go. Have fun. Okay, so this is a blue two coats sealer. This is part of Japonica. So I'm using my stick. Save all of these. They make great paint stirrers too. And glue applicators. And so basically catch a wave or a bubble is you want to put a wrinkle in your paper. I'm, I'm putting air underneath right behind where my stick is. See, there's air. There's air in there. It's a bubble. You see how the bubble moves? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to just See that? Oh, I think you could see that. I'm going to take that bubble and I'm going to push behind the bubble. You don't want a huge one. I have a couple customers that have talked to me about, um, about how long it takes them to apply uh, a transfer. And I, I keep saying, well, I, I just have to show you because it really... It doesn't take long at all, and you don't need to push super hard. You guys see me do it every week, so the tr really the trick is that bubble right there. That. Now, when you've got a big piece like this and a bubble, we're going to have to go back and make sure it's really burnished in. And this is what we call burnishing in the transfer. So burnishing is just rubbing, kind of creating a little bit of heat, making sure it's completely stuck down. And there is my tray. Okay, now I've got pieces uh, in this tray, which is a little smaller. Um, these are from the frond transfer. And this one is from Entomology Etc. And again, the tray is painted and sealed. Okay, so let's talk epoxy. There are different kinds of resin. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to put equal parts so I can start stirring. But I am going to do two equal parts as per the directions. Okay, so there's a resin and there is a hardener. I'm going to put the hardener into the resin. There's different kinds of resin. There is a uh, two-part epoxy. I believe it's called resin. It might not be called epoxy. I have a box here. When I'm done, I will show you that box. That uh, There's one kind that sets up rather quickly. That's the Amazing Cast Resin, and that's used for crafts um, to cast things. Um, that resin turns uh, white. There's a clear one also, but the one that I use turns white so that you know it's completely dry and you pop it out of the molds. Uh, that is completely different from the type of epoxy that I am using, which is used um, like on bar tops, on furniture. It's used as a uh, waterproof and very high temperature heat resistant top coat. 
Uh, it gives a really glossy finish. I, whenever I do it on my furniture, people think it's glass on it. You know, that's, that's what it looks like, is glass. Um, so this just gives your, your piece just more dimension and more protection. It's perfect for little projects. I've done them a ton on things like uh, pie crust tables because one of the uh, one of the exciting things, I guess you guys can see me and not. <laughs> one of the uh, exciting things about this is that uh, it is self-leveling and it will, if you're doing something like these trays or a, a tabletop with edges, hence a pie crust, it stops and it doesn't flow over the end and it has a re it's just much easier to do than if you did a, a piece of furniture, uh, like if I did the buffet behind me, which I've done pieces like this before you need to protect the sides and tape it up and keep checking on drips and all of that. Um, we won't have to do that with these trays, which is why I chose the trays to do, because it's just gonna stop and pool right on the inside of the tray because it has edges. So you just have to make sure that your piece is level so that your epoxy is level. You're supposed to keep stirring. Now you keep stirring because you are activating the two parts together and as you continue to stir, the cup gets, starts to get warm at about eight minutes, and that's how you know it's setting up. This dries clear. Um, it doesn't look clear in here, but it does definitely dry clear. It's filled with bubbles right now, but we're gonna take care of that when we put it on. This is all gonna self-level. This is actually warm now. I can feel the heat on it. a stick to spread it out too you don't have to be tipping I just find this to be the easiest way it's kind of like doing um, like an epoxy pour or paint pour spreading out you have work time for this it should not be setting up it takes 48 hours to completely harden so you do have some time you don't have to rush If I end up not having enough, that's okay because I can do a second pour. Uh, you have to do the second pour within a certain amount of time. Can't remember, I would have to look on the package. Um, but if you wanna do a second pour and you want it to stick to the first, which I've done uh, a few times because I, you know, if you don't see it, you might have a, an area that maybe didn't cover up the same. And so you wanna go back and cover it. Okay, so let's, I'll show you how. So if I want to fill that little hole in, this is all going to self-level, so I don't need to worry about that making a mark. I want this extra drip so I can... If this is already setting up while you're doing this, then you have uh, done something wrong. And I've only had that happen when I've gone back and tried to get a hair or something out of it after it had been um, sitting too long. And then it, it uh, made a mark where my finger went in and it didn't fix itself because it was already starting to set up. All right, so now I'm just trying to kind of cover that little corner right there. So there are air, there's all sorts of air bubbles in these, and you can see them when you look to the side, you can see all these air bubbles. The way to get the air bubbles out, and if you can't see them now, you're gonna, let's see if you can even see them. 
Can you see air bubbles there? Heat gun pops the air bubbles, takes them right away. And this is how, when this dries, if you don't do this, you're gonna see little white dots. Okay, but the heat gun pops those right on the spot. A hair dryer is gonna blow around all of your dirt and dust, so you don't really wanna do that. Um, a heat gun is really the right tool. There's two different kinds of resin. This is the casting resin that we use to put into the molds. It sets up in like a minute. Totally different from what I'm using now. This is what I'm using now. There's all sorts of different uh, versions of this, but this is like a glaze coat. This is epoxy resin. This is craft resin. It sets up in a minute. Um, big difference. So just make sure to read your boxes, okay? Because um, a craft resin would, would be kind of disastrous if you tried to use it the way um, I just did on these trays or on a countertop or anything. When I'm doing something large, I have a dedicated putty knife or a nice wide trowel to spread it out. And you do have work time. Um, and you know, you wanna get it nice and even. Um, it will self-level, but as evenly as you can get it. Um, I, wear, I definitely wear gloves if I'm doing furniture. I haven't really touched anything here. Um, I'm sure there are fumes. It's not real stinky and I'm kind of sensitive, um, but I just love how, I love how these, um, I love how they look. And I, can you see the reflection there already? It looks like glass on top. Uh, so in 48 hours, these will be all dried up and I'll finish the other two and I'll take some photos. Uh, it really is, um, you know, the hardest part is stirring the resin and then waiting for it to dry. As long as you follow the directions, it's super fun and you get a really pretty tray when you're done. Uh, it is actually food safe. Like I said, they do countertops with this stuff. Once it cures, um, once it cures, it, it is uh, food safe. So, all right, have an awesome day. I'll see you guys here next week. Thanks so much.